And we're going to pick it up from verse 45. Verse 45 to 52. If you have it, say amen. amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord says immediately. Somebody say immediately. immediately. He made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. Oh my God, somebody's getting to the other side today. Yeah. I say somebody is going over the other side today. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm seeing you going to the other side today in the name of Jesus. To go before him to the other side to Bethsaida. While he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. He departed to the mountain to pray. Now when the evening came, the boat was in the middle of problem. I don't know who's in that boat now. I said, I don't know who's in that boat today. Huh? But I want to tell you that no matter what middle ocean you're in a problem today, get ready. Jesus is about to walk on your water. Jesus is about to rescue you today. Look at what he says again. When the evening came, the boat was in the middle of the sea. And he was alone on the land. But what was he doing on the land? Praying. Then he saw them toiling or straining, rowing. You see, Jesus sees your struggles. I said, Jesus sees what you're going through. The Bible says when he saw them toiling, straining. Because the wind was against them. Huh? Now, about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. And would have passed them by. But when they saw him. You see. The anointing will pass you by if you don't shout. Eh? He, he'll let you drown if you don't open your mouth. Oh, But I went to church and nothing happened. But you sat there like a dummy. Huh? When they saw him walking, he was going to pass them by. The anointing. Their breakthrough. Their solution was going to pass them by. But they said, uh-uh. They said, uh-uh. My solution will not pass me by. My breakthrough will not pass me by. I prophesy to somebody. Your breakthrough and solution will not pass you by today. In the name of Jesus. Oh my God. Oh my God. When they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost. And what did they do? Watch this. Verse 50. They cried out, for they all saw him and were troubled. But immediately he talked with them and said to them, Be of good cheer. Be encouraged. It is... The moment he said it is I, they were Hebrew in upbringing. They remember their boy Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they were also in the burning fiery furnace and because they remember the story that there was a fourth man inside the fire they remember that this is the same one the God of Meshach Shadrach and Abed oh my god watch this 
Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. It is I. The moment he said it is I. The demons in the water, they, had, they, 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 they went deeper. They were stirring up problems. When they saw this foot, poop, poop, poop. Demons in the water said, ah, who's walking on our head? Who's walking on our head? Who's walking on our head? I speak to somebody that your God will walk on the head of your enemies in the name of Jesus. Hey, hey, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Hey, hey, hey. Then he went up into the boat to them. And the moment he went up, the demons that were causing problems for his people, they were arrested. May the Lord arrest your demons today in the name of Jesus. I said, may the Lord arrest your demons today in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, cease. And they were greatly amazed in themselves beyond measure and marveled. For they had not understood about the loaves because their heart was hardened. Now, I want you to read together for me that verse 48. That verse 48. One, two, three, go. Then... Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We give you praise and glory. And the people of God say amen. amen. Please have a seat. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Your hour of deliverance has come. Now tell the neighbor to the other side. Now neighbor, this is for you. I was sent by God to tell you that today your hour of deliverance has come. Ladies and gentlemen, God, how many know that God is a God of timing? God is a God of timing. That's what the Bible says in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, it says that in the fullness of time, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law. To redeem, to buy back, to recover those that were under the law. Somebody say, God is a God of timing. I also want you to understand that God created everything in His proper time. God created everything in His proper time. The Bible declares in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3... That there is a time and a season for everything under the sun. There is a time of peace. There is a time of war. There is a time for sleeping and a time for toiling. I want you to know that God has created everything in its proper time. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes though, it seems, I don't know about you, but sometimes... It seems as if God is late getting there. How many of you have, uh, have been there before? You've been praying, praying, praying. You've been giving, giving, giving. You've been calling, calling, calling. And it's as if God is not hearing you. It's as if you see other people and they get more breakthrough quicker than you. But I want you to know something today. It doesn't matter what it looks like. God is never late. I'm talking about God does not uh, come to your case never late. He's not subject to your time. He's not subject to the time of the clock. He's subject to his will. Can I speak to the church this morning? God is never late. Tell your neighbor, no, no, no. God is never. Never late. Never late. Let me tell you something. Because God is a God of time. He also has a time to bless you. Can I speak about that? Can I speak about that? 
thank God for the cross of Jesus thank God for the blood of Jesus hallelujah thank God for the resurrection from the dead thank God for the master who is king of kings and lord of lords thank God for the one that is the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end he is Jehovah Rapha Jehovah our healer he is Jehovah Jireh the Lord our provider he is Jehovah Shammah the Lord that will be there he is Jehovah Shalom the Lord our peace can I speak to somebody are you happy is somebody in the house of God happy ladies and gentlemen God has a time appointed to bless you I say he has a time to bless you can I speak to you that your time is not coming your time is now God is not a coming God I said God is not getting ready to God is going to eh! I don't like when people say God is getting ready to as if he was busy before my God somebody say he is and now God ever-present God he has a time to, to bless you he has appointed a time to bless you he appointed a time to bless Baron and Sarah how many re believe it how many know the story that's what he says in the book of Genesis chapter 14 the Bible says is anything too hard with God he said to Abraham about Sarah he said to him he said at this time I will visit Sarah and she will no longer be buried she will have an Isaac may the Lord visit your barrenness today in the name of Jesus somebody says my time tell your neighbor neighbor say hey 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 Tap him on the show. Hey, 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 hey. Say it's my time. I declare it's my time. Say I declare it's my time. At the appointed time, he said, I will return to you according to the time of life. Sarah shall have a son. When he got that prophecy, God is not a liar. He will speak and he will do. He will say and he will perform it. How many believe that? How many believe that? Even Pharaoh had an appointed time. But his time was not a good time. Look at what he says in the book of Exodus. Chapter 9 verse 5 and 6. Pharaoh had an appointed time. Watch this. And the Lord appointed a what? Huh? Somebody say a set time. Somebody say appointed time. Saying tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. Look at verse 6. And the Lord did that thing on tomorrow. And all the cattle of Egypt. What did they do? They die. May your enemies also be visited by the God of the appointed time. May the God of this church also visit your enemies right now in their appointed time. Come on and shout and say yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, somebody say God is a God of timing. He has an appointed time. Tell your neighbor, guys, a neighbor. Today is my time. Today is my appointed time. Ladies and gentlemen, sit down, sit down. You're making me preach too hard. God also has an appointed time to deliver you from sickness, to deliver you from demons, to deliver you from poverty, to deliver you from debt, to deliver you from setbacks, to deliver you from stagnation. Am I talking to the church this morning? I said today is your day. Today is your appointed time.
My God will do it. My God will do it. Somebody shout and say, Jesus. Listen. God has a time to bless you. And to make you recover what the devil has taken. I said to make you bring back what the devil has stolen. I said to make you bring back. Ah. How many of you have ever heard of the year of Jubilee? Oh, only five people? That's why you broke. Huh? That's why you, you, you loaded with you loaded with debt. Because you don't know the Jubilee. Huh? And you don't know the fulfillment of Jubilee that was shadowed in the Old Testament was fulfilled in the person of Jesus. That means that when a man comes to Jesus, he goes from slavery to release. Look at what he says in Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 10. Watch this. Put up there please. Deuteronomy 31. And Moses commanded them saying, at the end of every seven years, yeah. In the solemnity of the year of release, in the Feast of Tabernacle, when all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God, in the place which he shall choose, thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Somebody say year of, year of release. Now look at what it says in Mark. In, 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 I'm sorry. In John, John chapter, uh, no, I don't want to read that. Let's go to Luke, Luke chapter 4 instead. Verse 18. I don't want to go there too much because of time. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me. Look at this. I'm talking about the anointed one here. I preach to Jesus and I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I said I'm not, a, I don't care what people say. I don't care what they call me. I don't care what they criticize me about. I preach Jesus. I preach the Holy Ghost. I speak in tongues. I speak. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal. Wake up. He has sent to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance. The gospel preached in his right context when it is Christ centered brings deliverance to the gap. <laughs> to preach deliverance. That's why I like. <clears throat> I need to finish this message. Let's get into deliverance. I'm taking too long. Demons are relaxing. They say, oh, no, no, please, go ahead, continue, continue. <laughs> they must say, oh, preach more, preach more. It's because they know if I finish preaching, they have problems. <laughs> to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. To set a liberty. You see? To set a liberty. That's what we've been called to do. We, 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 we have been called to unlock people. Everywhere I go, I need to unlock people. I said everywhere I go, I need to unlock somebody. Today, somebody will be unlocked by the anointing of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Today, your finances will be unlocked in the name of Jesus. Today, your children will be unlocked in the name of Jesus. Today, your ministries will be unlocked in the name of Jesus. Put 
that verse one more time. No, no, 19. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. You know what year was that? You just read it in Deuteronomy 31. That is the Jubilee. Jesus came as your can't see they had to wait every seven years. Hey, what about if I die before seven? Huh? Then I won't enjoy it. But Jesus said, no more waiting seven, seven, seven. Eh? The moment you have, in my, have me in your heart, the moment you come to me, I'll blanket you with 365 days of Jubilee year. Every year shall be your year. Every day will be your day. Every week will be your week. Every hour will be your Jubilee. Every month will be... Hey! Somebody say Jubilee. Jubilee. God has an appointed time to give you a Jubilee. Jesus is that jubilee. If you don't know Jesus today, you don't have that jubilee. But before the service is over, get your life right with Jesus. Get out from the cold. Get out from the brokenness. Get out from the slavery. Get out from the captivity. And come to the liberty of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say, Jesus! Jesus! Somebody say, God will remember me in my appointed time. That's what he did with Job. That God remembers his people at the appointed time. Look at what Job said in chapter, in chapter 14, verse 13. Somebody say, Job. Job. Look at verse 13. Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave. That thou wouldest keep me secret. Until thy wrath be passed. That thou wouldest appoint. Look, look, look. Me a set time. To remember me. God is telling me. He's remembering somebody right now. I speak to the overflow right now. Air overflow, I speak to you. God has an appointed time. Yes. God has an appointed time. Yes, Somebody said, today is my time. Today is my time. Put that one more. One more time. Put brother Job there. That thou wouldest appoint me. A set time for what? Ah, And remember me. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oops. My wife didn't say anything. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Fire. She told me. Fire. <laughs> no fire. Okay. We release. We take it off. Okay. Somebody said my appointed time. My appointed time. See, it's because she wasn't there to dress me this morning. Honey, you need, eh, okay. You, you people, these people are having too much fun. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, your hour, your time is now. Say so your time is now. You know that God also has a time set to favor you. Eh? That time is not next week. Is Jesus a next week time? No. Is Jesus is a next year God? No. Jesus is a now what? No God. Look at what he says in Psalms 102.13. There's a time to favor you. Say to your neighbor, never get ready. Your time is here to favor. Psalms 102.13. Look at what he says. Thou shalt arise and have mercy on Zion. For the time to favor her. Yea, the said time. When is it? Now. Is. Is that past or present? Is that past or present? Present. Your favor has come. 
I said your favor has come. Every no in your life because of favor will be turned to yes. I said every no in your life today because of favor will be turned to yes. Yes, Papa. Every demotion will be turned into a promotion. Yes. Every demotion is turning now into a promotion. Yes. Somebody said my time. Somebody said my time. And lastly, God also appoints a time for your prophecy to come to pass. Thank you, Jesus. Look at what it says in Habakkuk chapter 3, chapter 2, verse 3. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3. Look at what it says. For the vision is yet. Eh? 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 For an appointed time. But. Oh my God. Le kaboshata. Makoso to rabobo sete rekataya. I receive it. I see somebody's prophecy already coming to pass. Yes, Papa. I see somebody's prophecy already taking shape. That's me, Papa. That's me. Hey. But at the end he shall speak. Let your enemies laugh now. You shall have the last laugh. I say you shall have the last laugh. Yes. Let them laugh now. By this time tomorrow you will have the last laugh. Yes. At the end he shall speak and not lie. Though he tarry. Hey, don't give up. I said, don't give up. Though they're saying it's not going to happen. Though they said you are full for believing that prophet. You are a fool for reading that Bible. Fire all over their body. You are a fool for praying like that. You are a fool for fasting. I come to tell you, don't listen to the lie of the devil. Yes. The devil is a liar. Yes, he is. The devil is a liar. Yes, he is. Papa. I said the devil is a liar. Yes, he is. Hey. Wait for it. Because I said don't give up. They may knock you once. They may knock you down twice. You may go down a third or fourth time. Five times, six times, seven times. Yes. But the Bible says that the righteous, they fall seven times. Hey, but the Lord, hey. They fall seven times, but my God will not leave you down. No. He will come and rescue hey. you. They will rise up. They will rejoice. Yeah. Somebody say yeah. Yeah. It will come to pass. I said it will come to pass. Don't forfeit your blessing through unbelief. I said don't forfeit your blessing through somebody else's mouth. The devil is a liar. Get rid of that demon. Yes. Get rid of that lie. Yes, Papa. Even if it's your own people yes. telling you that God is not going to do it. Tell them go back to sender. Yes. Tell them go back to sender. They say you will die. But go tell them go back to sender. Tell them to go back to sender. They say you won't make it, but tell them. Go back to sender. They say you will be sick, but tell them. Go back to sender. They say you are going down, but you say. Go back to sender. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Now watch this. I'll finish with this. Jesus has finished healing people on the other side of the lake of Gennesaret. Huh? He dismisses them. He says, boys, go back. The boys didn't know any better. They, at that point, they did not have the Holy Ghost inside. But they had the equal with them. 
though they didn't have the Holy Ghost, they had Jesus, which is equal to Jesus. He said, boys, go to the other side. They get on their boat. All of them. The youngest one is John. Say, John, you the young one, you push. So John gets in the water, he's pushing. The youngest one always get the the door. Huh? John, all of them. Peter, number one, he's there. James is there. Huh? Philip, Andrew, all there. John. Huh? Pushing. Finally, they get into the water. John jumps in. They begin to row. Sha, sha, sha. All of a sudden, when they get, watch this, to the middle of the sea, something began to happen. Something began to attack them. Something began to challenge them. The Bible says that the enemy came in as a wind to try to finish them. But I told you and I prophesy, the enemy was not able to finish them. Do you know why? Because the Bible says, as they were in the middle of problem, Jesus was praying, oh my God, oh my God. Yes. Jesus knew huh, that they will have problems. The Bible says that before they got to the middle of the problem, Jesus was already praying. That problem that you find yourself in, Jesus started praying before you got into it. And because Jesus is praying, the Father will never deny the Son. You are coming out of that problem by the prayer of Jesus. Watch this. Jesus is praying. Problem. Somebody say problem. Problem. The wind is beating them. Demons. Marine powers. They say, oh, we got them now. We got them away from that man. They say we isolated them. But what they did not know, that prayer has no distance. There's no distance in prayer. You can be on top of the mountain and your people can be in Chicago and your prayer will reach them in Chicago. The Bible says, Jesus gets up from praying. He stands at the cliff of the mountain. He saw them struggling. He said, I already prayed. Now, I interceded for them. Now, let me go deliver them. Watch this. The Bible says, at the fourth watch, Somebody say appointed time. Appointed time. At the fourth watch. What is the fourth watch? In the Roman way of dividing the days. They used to divide the days into three hours. Four segments of three. That's 12. Which began at six evening. Six to nine was the first watch. Nine to twelve, the second watch. 12 to 3, the third watch. 3 to 6, the worst. Hey. That's when demons are working. I said, that's when they're having the witchcraft COVID meeting. I said, that's when they're meeting to try to eat your flesh and drink your blood. Holy God! Fire! At the worst hour, the fourth watch, from 3 a.m. to 6 they said, we got them now. We're going to drink their blood today, fellas. We're going to eat their flesh today. They call the mermaid spirit. They call Leviathan spirit. They call queen of the cold spirit. They call queen of the ocean spirit. They call Jezebel spirit. They call king of the abyss spirit. They said, we're going to have fish today. But the Bible says, at the appointed hour, tell you my God is never late I said when they thought they were about to sink 
my God shows up when you think that devil is about to sink you don't be afraid the I am is about to show up don't go down don't be up let the God know that you believe him somebody say yeah Jesus begins to walk. At what time somebody said the appointed time? Poof. 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 Little wave demons. They think they're going to knock him down. And they start to rage. As they say, the little wave said, Huh? He saw them. He's walking. Huh? Just, uh, he's on this side. They're on this side. He's looking this side. They saw him. Because the anointing. When you don't capture when the anointing is moving. When you don't detect when the anointing has come. When you don't capture that the anointing is there for you and you don't do something to pull, oh my God, to put a demand on the anointing. I'm here to tell you, if you don't put a demand on the anointed one, Jesus Christ, he will pass you by. Somebody say, no, he will no, not. he won't, hey. They cried out. The moment they cried out, huh? he said, don't worry, fellas. It is I. You remember me? You read about me in Hebrew school at the synagogue when you were little? You remember? Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. You remember Daniel in the lion's den? You remember Jonah in the belly of the whale? He said, you know that well? It's down there, under my feet. Never to swallow anybody again. You remember the stories? When I sent my, my prophet Moses to Pharaoh? You remember my 10 powerful miracles in Egypt? You remember how I deliver Elijah? You remember how I deliver Israel from the hand of their enemies? You remember how I deliver King Jehoshaphat? From three kings, yes. from three kings, yes. he said, boys, I have come also to deliver you. Yes. May the Lord deliver somebody today. Yes, Papa. Come on and stand on your feet right now. Today is your appointed time. Today is your fourth watch. This is your hour of deliverance. Oh, my God. I said this is your hour of deliverance. Hey. Lift up your hands to heaven now. This is your hour. During this arise and shine. Watch this. Put that. One verse. Isaiah chapter 60. Verse 1. Let me talk to you. Isaiah 60. Verse 1. Arise. Shine. You know what a rice means? Eh? Can I help you in the meaning? A rice means take up your position that rightfully belongs to you. Huh? When somebody's tall arise, that implies that they are. Arise. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, read that for me and let the neighbor read it for you. Let that neighbor read it for you. Arise. 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 Let me read it from the New King James. Isaiah 
Oh, same thing. Arise, shine. For your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and the deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory. Oh my God. Somebody say arise. Arise means also to get up and succeed. Somebody say arise. arise. It comes from the Hebrew word kum, 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 which means get up to your position of success. Are you listening to me? Failure is not your portion. Yes. I come to tell somebody today is your arise day. Yes, Papa. Today is your success day. I receive it. It also means somebody say kum, kum. Become powerful. Hey. When he says arise, he says, hey, become powerful. Say as implying as that you have it. And you haven't been using it. Somebody say kum. Kum. Arise means hey, demon. I'm in the name of Jesus. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. But it also means somebody say come come time to build up what the devil has torn down yeah. arise means stop crying stop crying stop the pity party you've been yes. crying for 29 years 3 months 6 days it's time to build Yes. It's time to become powerful. Yes. Holy Ghost. Somebody say, shine. Shine. Look, look at the verse. Look at the verse. Arise and say it again. Arise and shine. What's this? In place. Become like the break of day when there is night and light breaks through the break of day. Darkness must give in to the day. When he says shine, what he implies is come and break, break. And become like that today, breaking night. Break whatever is in your way. Whatever doesn't want you to move forward. Whatever doesn't want you to shine. Whatever wants to take your glory. Somebody say, break for. Break for. Arise. Become powerful. Build. Take over. Somebody say, but take over. And shine. Shine also means be set on fire. Oh, you don't. You, you, you're not students. You're not students. Hey. You, you're not students. Hey. You're not student of the word of God. It comes from the Hebrew word called or. O R. Shine means to. Be set on fire. Yes. In other words, stop that weakling thing. That's why the God gave you the fire from above. He baptizes you with the Holy Ghost and Holy Ghost and Holy Ghost and fire. And lastly. To shine means change the atmosphere like a thermostat. You see, a thermometer is influenced by the temperature of the room. 
by the thermostat. He changes the temperature and the climate of a room. When the people that are called by God, they go to a place. Wherever they go, they are Holy Ghost thermostat. Wherever you go, the climate must change in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on and put your hands together for Jesus. Follow us on Facebook, Ed Citronelli Ministries, a ministry on the rise worldwide. Like our page and stay connected through live streaming videos and daily posts from Prophet Ed. Ed Citronelli Ministries, where the Holy Spirit is changing lives through Jesus Christ.